Well, hi there, guys. Thanks for joining me. This is your Society Chester. We're going to be doing a new book review today. A couple weeks ago, I had done an um, intro to a couple of new series out there. There was this one here, The Dandelion Dynasty, and also the Lacanius Trilogy. And I was looking for feedback on which one of these series I should start. And obviously, by the title of this one, we decided to go with the shadow of what was lost nothing against this one it could still end up being awesome and great it was highly recommended but i decided this one here and the reason for that was um the third book of this series is due out february 19th of 2019 so i figured give me a couple months to get these first two books done and that way, when the third book comes out, I'll be ready to go for it. So we're going to do a book review on the shadow of what was lost. So this is a first book in the Lycanius Trilogy. And you can see the second book there is an echo of things to come. Again, this one is already out, ready to go for you as well. Uh, third book was, should be due February 19th, 2016. So this here is um, part one of the Lacanius Trilogy series. It currently has 4.3 out of five stars rating on Amazon. And what I'm gonna call this is an epic mystery fantasy book. It's 693 pages and it was released November 8th, 2016. From what I understand, I think this was self-published and it was so well received that I think it was picked up by a uh, publisher after that, I believe. But don't quote me on that, but I think that's what I heard about it. So this book review will be as spoiler free as I can make it. So let's get into it. So what is this book about? Well, um, it's been 20 years since the godlike augurs were overthrown and killed. Now those who once served them, the gifted, are spared only because they have accepted the rebellious four tenants, which vastly limits their power. And in this series, we follow three to five main characters, mostly three in the beginning of the book. And then as you um, uh, continue on with the story, they meet more and more people and you follow them as they join them in their adventure. Uh, so uh, ends up being about five or six people towards the middle in the second half of the book. And there's also probably four to five side characters that you follow that interact with them as well. So let's talk about the pros and the cons and then uh, talk about well, how I thought about this book here. So, pro. Uh, the story is very well written and it adds things in a perfect pace. You don't have to like spend the first third of the book learning a brand new fantasy world and a fan new setting and everything. It's the stuff that's added, the characters that are added. And like I said in the beginning, there's just a couple characters you are dealing with. You're interested in those and as you start delving deeper and deeper into the book things more things are added and um you don't you're not thrust into everything at one time which i find really really good uh, really really helpful i find the pacing of this book as i got into it uh for me personally uh just a perfect pacing uh, things were introduced every chapter something was added some you learned some more information and um it was um, not too much to keep track of and it felt really natural a lot of times things were introduced as the characters were talking back and forth and they were talking about something that had happened in their past or something that um, they had talked to one of their advisors about so as i talked about in the beginning here we have the augurs, we have the gifted, we have the shadow, and all those things are different 
terminology that's used, but not everything is thrown at you all at one time as you slowly start to learn what the difference between a shadow is and a gifted and an auger and all the different um, ways to use uh, magic and special powers. I'm not even going to call it magic because magic is kind of a generic term. It's more like special powers, how you how you access this special energy that you can now funnel and uh, use. So I find that uh, things were added at a really good pace. It, you weren't just slammed with things over and over and over again. Pro number two, the characters are deep and interesting. And during this story, you find out more and more about them. They will grow and change during the book. In the beginning couple chapters of this book, you uh, they're just uh, seem like they're... I'm trying to <laughs> phrase it so that it's not any spoilers, but... Um, ouch. <laughs> they're, they are um, uh, young, inexperienced... Um, that's the best way of phrasing it without giving it away. Um, they are going to take their magical test to see if they become gifted and um, if they have some special powers. And uh, so the characters I felt are very deep and interesting. Very, very deep and interesting. It's not like uh, James Islington again, is the author of this series, and he did a great job of kind of giving you a little bit about the character, but not too much, just a little bit. And then later on, you find out, oh, this is, um, you know, you find out something else about them, and you find out something else about them, and uh, some of the things you think that you think you know aren't correct, and so there's all this... Uh, that's why I call it kind of a mystery to try and figure out who is what kind of person these characters really are. Or who is this really person? One of the characters that you start off in the book ends up being somebody very, very important later on. But you don't even know that until like three quarters of the way through the book. And I still think um, it's it's still there's after 693 pages, there's still a lot to learn and understand about these characters, especially with what happened. So deep and interesting. And you're not just given all the information about the characters. You kind of learn about them throughout the story and learn about who they really are, and where they really are and how they really are and what they can do and what they can't do. Uh, number three pro, you relate to the characters and you know how they're feeling. So yeah, there's uh, times in the book where they get sidetracked and uh, they uh, separate and then they get back together. And after all the things they experience in the book, you kind of feel their emotions as they finally get to see one another and get to uh, interact with one another. And um, it's quite an emotional ride, I would say. It's got some uh, ups and downs. There's some good things that happen to the characters. There's some bad things that happen to the characters and and how they, uh, uh, they're they on their epic quest. And uh, yeah, you kind of feel for them. You kind of understand them. They're because they're just they would be just like me and you growing up and living in this world and, you know, doing the things that they would do. And there's much more to them than what it seems like. So uh, you relate to the characters. Uh, things aren't what you think they are. And there are surprises in the story all the way until the final, the final pages of this there, like I said, uh, this is pro number four. Things aren't what you think. And that's what I find so interesting. That's why I call this an epic mystery fantasy. Because they're not... The characters aren't just... You're not giving all the information about them. You know, this character is X, Y, Z. And they do A, B, C, D. And everything. So there's a lot that you learn about the characters. And even though you learn some things, some of the side characters and some of the other main characters that come in later, they kind of interact 
with them and then they you find out more about them because they had known them in their past or they had learned something about them or uh, I'm trying to not give it away so um, yeah there is uh, so many good surprises about the different characters in this book it's just really really interesting uh, the way they are developed and like I said this kind of goes all the way back to number one where you're not just given everything right off the bat and you kind of learn as something happens in their adventure and they're forced to find out whether or not they can do this or they can't do this and if they can do it then everybody questions why they can do it and then if they can't do it then everybody questions why they can't do it and then so you kind of learn about things the characters <clears throat> as they uh, experience different things that I'm trying not to give away so let's talk about the cons shall we all right uh, there is one section in the book uh, kind of towards the, the latter third where there's a lot of action going on and there's a lot that the author is dealing with in this this time frame and it seems to me like it was that section was rushed this a little bit where you weren't given as much detail about the events and the characters that was going on um, during that time and it kind of uh, since there was a lot going on um, it wasn't used as many pages that could have expanded on it a little bit and again, I'm trying not to give it away what had happened, but there's a, a big traumatic point towards the end of the book and that interacts with a lot of the characters then trying to do this to change the outcome or do that to change the outcome and each one's trying different things. So there's three or four of them all trying to do something at the same time and it's kind of not as... Um, in depth for you it kind of it kind of uh, for me anyways it was it felt like it was um, you rushed those those couple chapters the, about three or four chapters towards the end of the book seemed a little rushed I don't know if they were trying to get it out in time or if they were trying to keep it under a certain amount of pages or whatever but that section I think could have been expanded a little bit more uh, because of how much was going on so uh, number two for the cons is this is a long book as you can see this is 693 pages so 700 pages so if you find that a con if you don't like really thick long you know stories then you know um, it could be a con for you for me it wasn't a con um, you know it was uh, it was a long and a big thick book probably one of the thicker ones that I've read in a while but uh, because the story was so interesting and the characters were so interesting and the events and the learning things and the mystery of what's going to happen next, how is this going to affect the characters? Are they going to be able to overcome X, Y, and Z? Or are character A and B, what's going to happen with them? What's going to happen with the other characters? So uh, I didn't find it to be... Uh, 693 pages as I said it's only been a couple weeks since I first got my hands on this book and I already got it completed so I, I feel uh, happy about that and the third con is there are quite a few side characters that are introduced here and there through scattered throughout the book and some of them seem to be not as fleshed out as some of the main characters or even some of the main side characters well, I'm talking about some of the uh, some of the other ouch <laughs> some of the other main side characters that um, I guess I would call them side side characters aren't as fleshed out as much as they could have been uh, they didn't seem like they have as much depth they didn't have as much interest to me in the story there was just a couple of them and it seemed like okay I would like to know more about them and then they came and go without much fanfare so then it was like okay maybe they came back in later much later in the story 
Um, but you still didn't learn anything about them during their time. So there's a couple side characters that it could have been a little bit better, could have been a little bit more about them in here. Again, I don't know if, if those sections got chopped out of the book because they were trying to keep it a certain size or whatever. But um, I think, you know, a couple more pages on each of these other characters. But it didn't really take away from the story much because they're, uh, you know, we're talking about some side side characters. We're not talking about any of the main characters. We're talking about some of the some of the people that they interact with for a little bit. So there's the pros. There's the cons. What do I think about this book? The Shadow of What Was Lost. Well, I'm glad you asked. Here is my overall rating. Bam. That's right. I'm giving this five stars. I love this book. I love this series. Again, nothing against uh, the other series. And like I said, it might be the Dandelion Dynasty. It might be just as good. But at this point, because of the mystery, because of not understanding what's going on, and even though we've got 700 pages in, you find out in the last two chapters something very very important that you didn't know about until the very very end and that's going to change how everything happens for book number two so there's going to be so much more than what's going on uh, there is i should mention um when i'm talking about how many pages this book is i'm just talking about the main book there is a second section that's about 30 or so pages long and that is the um, the beginning of book number two in there so if you read through this and you want to find out a little bit more about book number two you can I think there's uh, like I said about 30 pages in the back there but I love this book it was very good I love the mystery part of it I love the surprises that really kept me interested in what was going on with these characters these characters are deep. They are not just your regular, oh, you know, characters uh, from fantasy settings. And there's all this different kinds of ways. The, uh, as I mentioned, um, the augers used to uh, develop the land, or uh, the augers used to run the lands, but they got too powerful, so they were killed and removed. And everyone that was gifted then had to abide by these tenants that they can't use certain powers during certain times. And, you know, there's rules and regulations for it. So and even though uh, it's a fantasy setting, you don't run into like elves and dwarves and, uh, uh, you know, regular like regular dragons and orcs and hobgoblins and things that you would, you know, find in like a fantasy setting. It's still a fantasy setting because of the, uh, there's three things that make up, three things that make up a good fantasy setting. So you have your, your, your location, you have your story and you have your characters. And all three of these parts of this book are very, very strong. I find the characters to be the strongest. This, the story, which kind of goes with the characters, is second strongest. And then the location for me would be third strongest. Although all of them are very, very strong. It's uh, very, um, you know, the mystery part of it not knowing what's going to happen continues to read another chapter or two there was several nights where i was reading through this and uh, you know okay and then uh, i gotta read another chapter now oh crap i gotta read another chapter now and before i know it it's like 12 30 and i'm like oh man i gotta go <laughs> i gotta go to bed so there was nights that this one was gonna keep me up late reading it because it was just i had to find out what was gonna happen next what was gonna what surprise was james islington going to give me about these characters and like i said every i would say every three or four chapters all of a sudden it's like a bombshell what are you what really oh my gosh and then like you said 
You might have some good information about a character and then towards the middle of the book, all of a sudden something changes or somebody finds out some information and then all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, by the way, I, I, I fill in the blank. I, <laughs> I can't do this or I can do this or I'm not who I really look like I am. I'm somebody else or, you know, something like that. Or, oh, you had known me in my past, or, you know, things like that that happen that you just like, out of the blue and and i it was so good i can highly 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 recommend if you are interested in fantasy novels you don't have this one yet go pick it up from amazon and get it and read it because it was very very enjoyable as i said 4.3 stars on amazon um it was, I believe, self-published and then picked up by just uh, a publisher afterwards. And now we got book two and book three to come. So I can highly, highly recommend A Shadow of What Was Lost and the title, A Shadow of What Was Lost, means something to us. But when you read the book, you understand that the author titled this book because there are some interesting ways that this phrase now comes into play with how the story happens. So that makes it even more interesting when you look at the shadow of what was lost. For us, if we've never read the book, it kind of means, okay, I got an idea what that means. But like I said, there's terms and, and, and uh, things in here that you'll learn that might change or alter how you look at this actual title. So very, very good job on that. And we obviously have book number two to come, an echo of things to come. And we do find out that this title also, um, since I haven't read it, I don't know exactly, but I do know that there is some terminology that's used in this book that is going to make reference to the title in this book as well. So look forward to checking that out. So five out of five stars, highly recommend Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. Get this now, get it for Christmas, whatever. Get this one and get an echo of things to come. So when February comes and the third and final conclusion to this series comes out, you'll be ready to go. So thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you guys next time.